Hi guys, Allison here. Happy Fuse Glass Friday. So this week what I'm working on are, I don't know if you can tell from my sort of rudimentary sketches here, uh, I was, I wanted to attempt to make some agate slices. I don't know that I'm saying that correctly. Um, you know what I mean. They're like the rocks that have the cool colors and the different layers and the holes in the middle. So I'm gonna try that. Um, I think my best bet is to, to be using frit. Um, so I'm gonna make one purple, one blue, and one sort of um, green, like teal, turquoise. So I'm gonna start with purple, I think. Um, this is just uh, kiln paper that I've drawn these random shapes on with Sharpie just to give myself a guide. I do have quite a variety of frit that I've pulled out of my collection. Um, I will attempt to let you guys know what I'm using as I'm using it, but it's just a variety of different purples uh, as well as I have a gray, pale gray, bronze, and also white as well. I have some powders, I have some fine, I don't think I have any medium. I think I just have powder and fine. So those are the sizes I'll be working with. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started, see how this turns out. So to apply my frit, I'll be using a little plastic spoon here and my favorite little tools that are like rubber modeling tools. I really like these when I'm using frit. Um, I will be using hairspray mostly to attach the frit but I think for the first layer, I'm actually just gonna do like an outline of Elmer's glue first for the outer ring. I think that will sort of hold my design in place a little bit better than just using hairspray. Um, and I'm thinking before I get started, I should also maybe cut these apart so that I can work on them individually and not have the different colors cross-contaminating each other. So let's do that. So like I said, I'm gonna start with purple. Um, from the references that I was looking at and from you know what I know from what I've seen in real life, it's like the outline is the rock part. So that would be like the gray or brown, you know, less pretty colors. And then the inside is sort of, um, layers, slices, or uh, yeah, layers of the different colors as, you know, sort of looking like stripes. So I'm going to start with the bronze and the pale gray as sort of my outline bit here. So like I said, I'm just going to do, first do some glue. Uh, I'm also using the larger size for it, so I'm using the fine as opposed to the powder for this. Start with the bronze. So I do want a pretty thick layer. I'm not being terribly careful just because I'm going to go back and clean it up with my tools here, so. Now my thought was that I could just now push it into the glue this way and I don't really care what the outer edge looks like as far as being clean line, but I would like the inner edge to be a cleaner line uh, for the next color, the next layer that I add. Let me get that trapped in the glue. Um, I, I think I'm gonna fire these guys texture with texture as opposed to a full firing. That worked out so well for me on my, on my last video. That was such a fail. So I think I'm scared of firing things full uh, for the moment. So you can always fire something smoother, but once you fire it too smooth, you can't go back and make it have more texture, so. I think that's what I'm gonna end up going with. Plus because it's frit, it's like not a lot of glass. So it's probably gonna shrink up quite a bit. 
so I don't think I want to go with the full fuse. Alright, so this is looking pretty good. I'm going to go in with some of the pale gray as well. Um, maybe just kind of mix these guys together. These colors are both uh, translucent and they're also both pretty, they're not very like dense colors. They don't have a ton of pigment to them. So that's why I'm really piling it on because I'm, I'm assuming that it's going to be much more subtle than it might initially look just because of how light those colors are. pretty good. I'm going to do my best to try not to knock into this too much as I'm working because I don't want it to fly everywhere but I also don't want to hairspray it until the very end because if the paper becomes all sticky before I'm done uh, that's just going to be a mess. I'm not going to be able to push the fret around anymore. So let's start with my first purple. This is Plum Opal. Now the agate slices have very, very, very thin layers. So I'm definitely going to try to replicate that. Um, so make the powder layers much more thin than I've made the, and, and I mean thin this way, not this way, <laughs> if that makes sense. Uh, I'm gonna make them much thinner than the outer ring I've made. So this uh, appears to be working pretty well. This is sort of going how I was expecting, so that's encouraging. So I'm just gonna keep on moving. I think uh, what I should have considered is that I don't wanna have any extra of any of the colors stuck inside here after I'm done with the stripe because I'm not gonna be able to get it out. So I think I need to be a little bit more conservative on the next color I put down because I would rather have to add a little bit more of the color than worry about there being too much and uh, not knowing what to do with the excess. So that's something I think I'm gonna maybe run into here. So I think I'll probably just have to sort of uh, spread this out and redistribute in order to use it. So that's good, that's good to learn. So I think that's looking pretty good. Maybe not quite even, but it's nature, so it's not going to be perfect. That's what I'm going to tell myself. Okay, so that was plum opal. So now I want to use something that's, you know, not terribly close to the same color. Because uh, I want there to be some contrast. So maybe let's go with grape transparent for the next one. And 
now that I'm seeing how sort of well the powder is working for what I'm intending, uh, I'm not sure that I'm going to use these fine ones. I mean, so I really want to use this orchid color. I don't think I have this in powder. I can double check um, through my stock. Maybe I do have it, but maybe I'll find something else to use. So I did just check my stock. I, I switched up some of them just to powders. I don't have this orchid in powder, so I'm gonna have to use the fine for that. Um, okay, so let's see, we've used plum, we've used grape. Um, I also got this sapphire color, which is a very, very pale blue, but it's sort of like a purple blue. And we have pale purple, mauve, lilac, deep purple and cherry blossom opal, which is like a pink. I don't know if I'm gonna use this. I think that's gonna be too pink. So I'm just gonna keep moving here. I'm gonna go with the sapphire next. Cause even though it's technically blue, I think it'll, I think it'll work for what I'm doing here. I feel like I'm uh, making this side stripes thicker than this side for some reason. I don't know if that's like the angle I'm looking at this project or something. I'm gonna add a little bit more over here to try to even it out a little bit, but. Sapphire. Next I'm gonna go with lilac. So all the previous ones I've been using have been translucent. Lilac is an opaque. So that'll be oh you know what? Probably should have I probably should have been doing them translucent opaque, translucent opaque. But we'll see. Maybe on the next one. purple next. There is not a lot of contrast, so this is going to be more difficult. <laughs> Uh, 
um, be white. This is also going to be hard to see just because it's white on white. I apologize. I'm going to go back to grape. I think this is my first repeat. Um, I just want to add another sort of purple purple here. As you can see, my inside blank area is not the shape that I had initially drawn out. That's fine. I'm not going to worry about that. Now I'm just thinking if I want to, in the center there, if I want to add more of the gray and bronze or maybe just the gray inside. Um, I feel like sometimes the center is like the same look as the outside. I'm going to add some gray. So, Back on the pale gray. Oop, don't want to add too much. Oh, this looks really nice so far. Again, it could, you know, look terrible once it's fired, but <laughs> as of what it looks like now, this is definitely what I was envisioning. So I think I'm going to go ahead and call it. Um, like I said, I wanted to actually make three of these, so I can't spend all day on the first one. Um, I'm going to hairspray this. Pretty well, as you can see. Uh, I'm going to let it dry a little bit before I attempt to move it. I'm just going to slide it over onto my kiln shelf, which is off screen, and then I will be back to do the following two colors. All right, so I'm back with the next one. This is going to be uh, the blue one. Um, I'm basically going to be working in the same exact way, just switching up the colors a little bit. Um, I have all of the powdered colors in the different blues. And then I still have the bronze and the white and the gray I put away by accident. Let me go grab that. Okay, so I have the pale gray here too, so I'm going to do the same thing with these on the outside, etc. Um, this one's a little bit smaller than the purple one, so I'm probably not going to be able to get quite as many stripes. That's okay. Um, this is just sort of an experiment for me here. So, go ahead. I'm going to do the glue outline again.
dark blue, then I'm gonna go with sky blue. I think all the blues I picked are translucent, uh, except for maybe one. I just, I don't have as many blue options as I do, as I did purple ones, so. That'll be interesting to see the difference between one using all translucents and then one using the opaques as well. Sapphire again. And then we're going to go with Deep Aqua. I don't think I've used this one yet, although it's hard to keep track. No, I haven't used this yet. This is a really green blue. Uh, then I have this called cobalt blue slash white dual tone for it. So thinking this is just cobalt blue mixed with white. I'm um, not sure how that's gonna look, but we'll try some of that in the center here. And then I think I'm gonna go and add some more uh, gray like I did on the purple one. There definitely is less room to work with on this. I think if I were to do this again, I would make them all closer to the purple size. I think this is a bit too small just to get enough variety of colors, enough uh, different rings here. But this is why I'm making multiple so we can experiment together. Okay, so that looks pretty good. And then get a pale gray. So that looks pretty good to me. Uh, again, I'm just gonna hairspray it before I attempt to move it. I don't think I'm gonna do a green one on second thought. I just, this was, these are a little bit more tedious than I had anticipated. I think the two that I've made will sort of give me the information that I'm looking for. Um, and I don't really think I need to make a, another one. If I love how these turn out, of course, then I can go ahead and make another one again. Um, so I'm, obviously, since these are made of frit, they're going to be very, very thin and very, very fragile. I'm assuming that they're not going to be able to be used as a standalone project, so I will have to refire these into another project at some point. Um, but we'll see how they turn out. So... Like I said, I'm going to fire these on a tack fuse and I will show you how they turned out tomorrow. See you then! Hi guys, welcome back. It's the next day. I have my 
tack fired uh, agate slices here. Um, love the purple one. Uh, they are really delicate, so I'm just gonna forgive me if I drop one and break one. Uh, yeah, they're super thin, which, you know, I knew going into it. I just think that this looks so cool with the stripes here. That worked so well for what I was going for. Um, I do think it's really interesting that there's such a big gap between the outer ring and the powder. My guess is that the powder just shrunk so much more than the fine glass. Um, and then they just kind of separated like that, like how, but it didn't really do that in the center here. Hmm. Maybe I'll have to experiment with that some more in the future, but I just, I think it really, especially this one, definitely did what I was intending to do. Um, the blue one's a little bit less impressive. Uh, some of the striping here is also really cool. It just, I, I think because it was smaller, I wasn't able to make thick enough rings maybe, and that's why I have so much more separation here. Um, but regardless, I still think it looks pretty cool. So as I said earlier, these are too fragile to be standalone projects. Like it's holding together enough for me to pick it up and you know flip it around and talk about it. Uh, however, I would not feel comfortable like hanging this on the wall for display. I just think it would just be, you know, a disaster waiting to happen. The back side of this looks really cool too. Hmm, good to know. Okay, so what I'm going to do to uh, make these a bit sturdier in a second firing here is I'm going to back them with, um, like I'm going to use a purple glass on the purple one and then a blue glass for the blue one. I was thinking about doing clear, but I really want to like fill those gaps with the right color. Um, I still want the hole to be, oops, I still want the hole to be clear. So what I'm going to do is let's see, trace this here. Oops. Really trying not to break this. Although if I'm firing it again, I guess that isn't such a big deal anyways. Sharp isn't working good. So I have this drawn out. I'm going to cut it out. Uh, I can't cut the hole out from the center, but I do have an I do have a plan. Okay, so um, like I was saying, I can't cut the hole out of the center, but what I can do is preemptively cut the purple piece in half, then cut the hole out, piece it back together, and then put this on top. So I'm just going to see here if there is a certain spot where it would be good for me to make that cut. Um, I think it just like top to bottom here. Seems to be like the thickest area. So 
So basically, you're gonna put this right in the half. And then I can go in and try to get that piece out. That turned out pretty well. I'm just going to cut a little bit more of that off to make it match up a little bit better. Alright, so that's pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and do the blue one as well. Um, I'm going to use this blue. This is, I think this is a luminescent color by Wismach. So typically if you fuse this, the luminescent side down, uh, that shows better. So that's what I'm going to do. Same technique here. Um, yeah, that's like really thin. I'm hoping this one holds together all right. All right, uh, so I'm gonna get this one glued down too. Ooh, 
sticking to my fingers because the frit has like pokey edges. Okay, so let me zoom in so you can see. So definitely still like the purple one better, <laughs> I think in the future. Um, I mean, let's see how these come out, but I, I think I'll probably be making more of the purple one. I, I really do like the way that that looks, and I think maybe a couple more tweaks in the technique, and these could be some really cool projects. Uh, I'm debating if I should add more frit to sort of fill in um, debating, debating. I think I'm just going to fire these and see how these turn out. And then if I, if I do more in the future, I can always change it up. So I'm going to fire these again, uh, to attack fuse again, and I will be back again tomorrow to show you the final results. So I'll see you then. Bye. Hi guys. Welcome back. It's the next day. I have my finished and fired agate slices here. Uh, let me just start with the purple one to talk about it, pick it up here. As you can see with the light passing through, you can really see the variation in the frit stripes there, way better than if it's just resting flat. Um, the purple background did split a little bit here, more than it did on this seam, so that's a little bit disappointing. But it's still pretty sturdy, uh, definitely, you know, less fragile than just the frit was so I am happy I added the purple um I think maybe I should have done another one with a clear base that'll be for next time because maybe the purple just made it a little bit too dark but I do think it's pretty cool pretty unusual um maybe I could add some dichro a little sparkle on the next one or iridescent and here is the blue one Still not as big of a fan as the blue one as the purple one, but that's okay. Uh, as you can see, that is the luminescent blue on the back there. It's a much more subtle from the front, but adds a little something. Still cool. I think this one looks better actually on the white than lifted up, but I don't know. How cool would it be to make like a wind chime or something with these? I think they'd be too fragile though as a wind chime. Hmm. Lots to think about, but overall, I think it was a cool experiment. I do, I do like them. I think just needs a little bit of tweaking um, before I would feel comfortable like selling these. So let me know what you think down below. If you did like this project, feel free to subscribe to my channel. I do put out a new video every Friday and I'll see you guys next week. Bye.